This is an introduction on how to use the Launch Visualizer for the first time. I am currently signed in as a premium member, which you can see by coming up here to this account. So I have access to all the features. When you are not logged in as premium, some of these items will be locked and you will need to upgrade to either a basic or premium member to access them. So I am going to select the rocket design. I'll start there and you'll hit the choose design button and this will load um, either user designs or demo designs. The demo designs are what comes with the software when you first start um, and you can choose any one you want. I'll choose a two-stage Skymetra and hit select and you'll notice that it will draw the rocket here in the VTK viewer. So this is a three-dimensional environment and you can take your mouse and you can click and drag and orient the rocket from any viewpoint. Notice the compass rose on the ground and the wind direction and where that wind is coming from. You will be able to adjust that wind direction and the orientation of the rocket by going to the starting state tab. But before we do that, we'll go here to selecting a launch site. Uh, when we design a simulation, we work down through these tabs, and the second one down is the launch site. And I'm going to choose a launch site from the database, so I'll click on this. And you can search for all the different rocket clubs around the country, and I'm going to choose Hawaii. So here's Hawaii Rocket Club and it will reorient the map and it's loading the map right now so here is the launch site and this launch site appears to be right here on the beach and you can again scroll out you can use the buttons down here plus this little compass re wheel to reorient the scene and kind of get the lay of the land so we're launching from the beach and north is straight up and straight up now and kind of uh, we would probably want to launch either to the northwest or towards the northeast so that our rocket doesn't land here in the water so now i'm going to go to the starting state and i'm going to angle my launch rod i'm going to angle it here you can grab the slider here and then i'm going to adjust the position um, i think i'll go to the northwest and you can see that the rocket has reoriented it itself here on the launch pad and I'm going to leave all these other configurations alone and notice that there's a lot of data here and there's a scroll slider here that you can move around if you're not seeing everything the next tab is the wind conditions and the temperature and humidity and I'm going to leave those alone and I'll just check the wind right now it's a steady wind and I'll click on that and it shows that I have a wind coming out of the west at eight miles an hour. So that's this right here. And if I wanted to change that, I would have changed it in that uh, dialog box. Next, we're going to select the rocket motors. And this is a two-stage rocket. And we're showing the, the first stage, which is the sustainer, which is up here. And then the bottom stage is indicated by this two right here. So this is the second stage down here at the bottom. Uh, to choose an engine, you'll come down here to choose engine. And right now I've got the upper stage highlighted. So that's the, where it will be placed. And I'll just select, uh, we'll choose an Estes C6. And then you're going to choose your ejection delay, just like you would in real life. And I'll choose a seven second delay and click OK. So now it loaded that C6 here in the upper stage, and it was a C6-7. And I'll do the same thing for the booster motor. So I'll again highlight it and then hit Choose Engine. And we'll also choose a, a C6 motor for that one, but this time we'll say it's a C6-0 and click OK. And so now we have the C6-0 and the C6-7 loaded into the rocket. Our next tab is the flight events. This is when the parachutes and the staging is going to occur. So the top one here is a staging event because it shows a staging type. 
And right now it's going to stage at maximum ejection delay. And the parachute in the upper stage is also going to deploy at maximum ejection delay. Uh, what that means is it's controlled by the rocket motors that we selected in the rocket. And if you go back here, the maximum ejection delay is right here. So the parachute is going to come out on the top stage at 7 seconds, and the rocket is going to stage at 0 seconds when that booster motor burns out. The My data down here is the last tab, and this is what will be generated once we run the simulation. Um, so we'll go ahead and click the launch button, and you can see that there's this arrow pointing at the launch button here in the bottom left. Go ahead and click on that. You can add a comment to the simulation, and then hit the simulate button. When the simulation is done, um, it will give you the rocket sitting on the pad, again on the map of the world which we selected originally. And I'm going to click and drag with my mouse so I can reorient the view of the rocket sitting on the beach. Down here is the mini view of the rocket, which gives us a close-up view of the rocket. And this main window can give us a far view of the rocket. Um, this cone that's extending upward from the rocket, we call the weather cocking cone. We would like to see that the rocket have the apogee point, the highest point in its flight, stay within that cone. That is controlled up here under the preferences. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, let's launch this rocket. So down here is the play button, and we're going to go ahead and click on that, and the rocket's going to take off. You can see down here in the mini view what's going on in real time. And the rocket went so high that when it went out of view, and so we're just zooming out and then just reorienting the view. And again, you can change the compass view of the, of the rocket and look at it from any viewpoint that you want. And then just click and drag around until you can see the rocket where it is. Um, this is a two-stage rocket, so the red lines are the upper stage and the yellow is the bottom stage. So it looks like our bottom stage is uh, has landed in the water and our top stage is still coming down under parachute right now. Uh, while that's happening I'll go ahead and show you some of the other features here. This is uh, this button right here will show and hide the mini view. It toggles that on and off. This gives us a different camera view. So there's four different camera views. Right now I'm under the trajectory view, which is a fixed camera view. So wherever the camera is, it's fixed in one position and the rocket will move through the camera view. If you want to keep the rocket always centered in the middle of the screen, that's this button right here. That's what it will do. It will center the rocket in the window. So when I click on that, you'll see that the rocket is reoriented, always in the middle of the screen. And then I can, again, zoom out, and I can click and drag to see where that rocket is landing. And this one probably will land down here in the park. Um, the other views are a camera on the rocket, and then we have a ground observer view. And I'm going to pause the rocket right now, and I'm going to go back to the trajectory view. And if you, if you lose your rocket ever and you need to find it, come over here, and you, there's a button that says Find My Rocket in the Sky, and just click on that, and it will recenter the view so that the rocket is dead center again in the middle of the screen. So there's our rocket coming down under parachute. Um, over here we have the flight data. We'll click on that and that gives us a real-time view of what's going on and where the rocket is in the sky. And you can scroll through that data and see what's going on. And then up here we have our preferences. And this is where we can control this particular screen. 
Um, the apogee point um, I have turned on right now. Uh, the weathercocking cone, as I described, is also turned on, and you can adjust the uh, settings for that. And you can see in the background that it's getting uh, more opaque as I move that slider. The colors on the screen are controlled here. Uh, we can also control the colors for a multi-stage rocket, and this was a multi-stage rocket, so I have a booster which was set as yellow, yellow, and I can change that color to anything I want. So now I'll set it as blue and click OK. You can see it already turned blue. Um, if you can't see it, just adjust it to a color of your preference. Uh, we also can adjust the flame and the smoke color. Um, we'll have a yellow flame and we'll have gray thrust smoke and blue tracking smoke. And our smoke is going to stick around according to the smoke lifespan. Mostly by default it will be set to around 8 seconds, but you can use up to a maximum of 30 seconds. Um, that apogee point is way up here, is that little green dot right there. And the color of that dot tells us, is the rocket within the weathercocking cone or is it outside? If it's a green dot, it's inside the cone. And if it be red, if it's outside the cone. And so that's our trajectory of the rocket. Uh, one other thing that you might uh, want to be interested in is the settings. Um, so we'll minimize this view right here. And it always takes us back to the data screen. And so this is our last flight, and it gives you the maximum altitude. Um, if you want to change the units, so right now we're showing feet, you would come up here to units, and you can change to whatever units you would like. Click OK, and you can see that it readjusted the screen right here. You can change the columns that are displayed here by clicking on the column configuration button. And you probably also want to share this simulation with your friends, so if you'll click on the share button, you can decide where you want to send it. You can send it to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, or you can send it via email. And this link, when the person clicks on the link, when you share it, um, it will open up this exact simulation in the launch visualizer so they can see what you saw when you ran your simulations. So that's really nice to do to share your designs with your friends.